Okay, team. Now this is a question uh, that we're going to do involving phoneme segmentation and using those sound boxes and say to move it. I want this is a longer question. Uh, you can see this is going to take more than a minute, maybe more than two minutes. So I'm going to say, hey, this might take even one. To, this might take three minutes to read over. It's just a lot. Now this, let's just say this. This is a three-minute question for you. Uh, in a moment, um, I'm going to show you how to really. Uh, speed it up. But for, for now, let's say it's going to be a three minute question for you. Let me enlarge it a little bit. Okay. And I want you to take them. No, that's not going to help. I'll enlarge it when I do the editing. I want you to take a moment, pause me, read it. Tell me when you finish reading this long question. Okay. Pause me now. Unpause. Woo. That was a lot. Who was like, oh my goodness, I have to do a hundred of these questions. My, my brain is going to be dripping out of my nose or my ear, right? This is just too much. Here's, a, here's how you take something that's too much and you simplify it, okay? I don't know. I don't know. These new exams, you know, they have got some good questions, but, you know, as you go through the exams, you're like, hey, cut it down a little bit. You can, you can get to the point a little faster, right? It's, it's, it's extended. So I want you to realize something. Uh, when we read this opening prompt here, I'm not going to read it, but when you read it, right? What you need to do within the first 10 seconds is what? You need a spot that this is involving say it and move it. Yeah? And then you need to know what that is. Oh, I know what say it and move it is. So yeah, I know what say it and move it is. So yeah, I know what it is. So, so now that you know what this term is, right? Then this becomes a little easier to comprehend. You don't have to read this over three times to understand the activity. You already know what say it and move it is. It's a phoneme segmentation activity, right? And, and what is it, what's, it what the t what's the teacher doing? The teacher says two, says a two phoneme word. That means a word that only has two sounds. These are all two, two, two phoneme words. I'm going to take an easy one. Let's take, uh, let's take uh, this one here. <laughs> uh, go. Okay. Or, or, or toe. Let's do, let's do go. That's easy. Go. Oh. Okay. So they take that two phoneme word and the, the student repeats the word. The teacher says the word go. The student says the word go. Okay. And then the student using uh, using the using the mark using those counters right is like they're like uh, I hear a go oh go right and they'll be like I hear two sounds that's that's right that's okay so now that we know what this is go oh go right a uh, uh, segmenting and blending activity. And now we know what two that that two phoneme words are just basic words go day be she right very basic words. Now that we know what that is, this this shouldn't really take us a whole lot of time to to process it. There's a teacher. They're doing this activity with words like go. Okay. Now we go on. Once the child demonstrates mastery of this activity. Which of the following strategies would be the most appropriate for the teacher to use next to build the child's phonemic awareness? So right now, they're just doing two phoneme words, right? So the next strategy, I'm going to go to the answer. Okay. The next strategy would be go to words that are very similar. Okay that have overlapping sounds, and maybe there's one more, not two more, just one more sound. So for example, in this one right here, uh, the reason why D is right is because now we're going to do this activity where we have two and three phoneme words, and they only differ by one sound. By the way, we call words that only differ by one sound minimal pairs. And we'll talk about minimal pairs in a little bit, but but maybe I can just I'll highlight what a minimal pair is. Uh, real quick, we'll get to this later on. A minimal pair are two words that differ by one phoneme, pin, bin. 
all right? And minimal pairs are really good because they, they get, there's overlapping sounds, the in, and then there's one sound that's different, the, the P or the B. So this becomes a, an opportunity for the student to practice with things that are very similar, and then there's slight differences, right? So in this case right here, once they're able, let me go back, oh, gotta go back to, whoopsie, whoopsie, back to this one. Once they're able to do, uh, say it and move it with these basic words, the next choice of words should be very similar. And the, the, the words that the are the closest are words that only differ by one phony. So that is why you'd work with two and three syllable words that differ by one phony, like pin and bin. They would be the easiest ones to use, the closest ones to use, the most similar ones that would only differ by one sound, okay? All right, I know this one's really hard and it takes a lot of effort to get to this. Um, you know what? Maybe this is still going to be a three-minute question for you or four-minute question for you, but maybe now that you've had exposure to it, I don't know, maybe that exposure to these really long questions, it makes it a little bit easier. I, I feel like, you know, um, you know, if you can come into a question like this and be like, okay, I now know what that means. And I now know what that means, right? So we're just using words like go for this activity. Now I know what this is. Then I think what I'm saying, the next word that you should, when you do this activity again with two words, you should choose words like go and, and toe, so words that have similar sounds that differ by one phoneme. I feel like that should make sense, yes? And so that might help make the a little bit more sense. And maybe that brings some comfort, right? Maybe like, okay, at least I understand it. It might still be a, now it might be more like a two minute question, but now you understand it a little bit better. Or maybe it's still a three minute question, but now you understand why D is correct, okay? All right, the answer is D. And uh, in this one right here, it's a great one. Uh, it's a great one to do. I don't know if it's a, if it's a, if it's the question has been written the best way. It's a little bit too long for me, but it's a great way to get exposure to say to move it to think about phonemic aware, awareness and phoneme isolation, blending and segmenting, and it introduces that new word minimal pairs. So you should know what that is. You should know what minimal pairs are. Okay. All right. Uh, let's keep going. And now these are going to get harder, team because I'm giving you all the hard ones at the end of this section. So uh, bear with me. And uh, if you need to take a break, take a break, but bear with me, they're gonna get a little harder now. Don't, do not fret. This is just uh, getting you that extra practice. Okay, let's keep going. 